Hi guys, today we're gonna to talk about lesson planning tips to make lesson planning easier as a music teacher. These are all the tips that I use to ensure that my lesson plans lesson planning sessions are quick and easy and actually kind of fun. And we're gonna do that in just one second, but first we're gonna grab a cup of coffee because I'm tired. So we're gonna do that first and then we shall chat about it. And feel free to go grab a cup of coffee for yourself too. You can pause the video, it's okay, it's okay. All right, I'll see you on the other side. All right. Okay, so lesson planning tips. Now the first thing I wanna tell you is that lesson planning is my favorite. Yeah, I said it. Lesson planning is my favorite thing. I love trying to come up with fun ideas for how I'm gonna engage the kids and you know, trying to put all the different things that I want to do in a week into its little like puzzle piece. It's like, it's like a puzzle. It's like trying to fit everything in and figuring out like the best flow and just all those things. I love it. So I feel like I'm very qualified to let you know some ideas for how to make it easier and make it like actually enjoyable. Now throughout these, some are gonna be like a super, super simple and then others will be a little bit more complex. So if you hear one, you're like, Okay, yeah, I, I got that. Then it just keep listening because there might be something else you haven't thought of in a second. So number one is having a lesson planning routine. This basically means that you know when you're gonna lesson plan and you just do it the same way every time. So I used to do this on a certain day. I would pick like on Thursdays, I would sit down and I would write my lesson plans and I always had kind of the same system. I would like brainstorm and then I would write them out in a kind of my like shorthand and then I would actually type them out for my administrators because they want a lot more detail than I feel like I need. But now I actually have a really funky schedule. So if you've seen any of my what I'm teaching this week, so you'll know I see the same kids for a week at a time and then I see like a different class the next week. So I plan for a month at a time, which is actually really, really nice because it gives me this like overarching which is actually really, really nice because it takes more time, but I'm able to make things flow a lot better throughout the week. And so now what I do is I pick one week out of the month where I'm finding all the lesson plans and doing that kind of stuff. And then another week where I'm like typing everything out because again, I have to type out all the lessons for that long. And another week where I'm working on all of like the slideshows that I need and any worksheets I need to find and like the, those kind of things that we need to figure out as well. But having a lesson planning routine makes things so much easier because one, you're not stressed about when you're gonna lesson plan and two, you just know what's gonna get done. And it just makes it so much better. And you know, if you grab a cup of coffee, that's what I did today. So I'm not gonna tell you how many cups this is, but I was working on that today, typing out those lesson plans and drinking my coffee. And I was like, you know, I know this is what I need to do during this planning period today. So I, it just, it made it so much better. The second one goes along with that, and that is having a classroom routine. Now you can have like a whole classroom routine or just maybe like a beginning of class or end of class routine, whatever works for you. But this is really, really helpful. I had Carissa Duncanson on my podcast, which is Becca's Music Room. You can find it on pretty much any podcast player. And if you can't find it, let me know and I will work on it. And she was talking about how with her littles especially, she has a really specific routine of like, first we do this and then we sing a song and then we work on a concept and then we play instruments and then we read a book. Like, I don't remember exactly what it was because she didn't um, script it all out for us. But just the idea of having like, okay, I know these are the elements that we're gonna do and then you just switch them out. So instead of the song we sang last week, we're gonna sing a different song. Instead of that book, we're gonna read this book. And that makes lesson planning so much easier because you can kind of just plug and play. I don't do that because I like to have a little more flexibility and I like to have some days where I can spend you know a lot of time on a book and other days where we're doing a lot of different things and maybe one day where we're doing centers, you know, back when we got to do centers good times um and so what i do is i have like a beginning of class routine actually i have a video all about it so i will link that down below and so it basically goes like this like we come in and i say you know hello to everybody say hi and then we always start with stretches in every single one of my classes we kind of did that on accident one time and it just stuck and then we do a deep breaths we go over our I can statements with our mirror words, which is a whole brain teaching tactic. So for example, this week, um, third grade's working on Swan Lake and we're doing the Swan Lake virtual field trip, which is so much fun. And so they are echoing after me. So I'll say mirrors up, they say mirrors up. This week, this week, I can, I can describe the ballet Swan Lake. 
mirrors away. So it just gets them actively involved in the I can statement so that if my administrators come in, they're very impressed. <laughs> my kids know what we're working on. I know what we're working on. And also they just have some of that vocabulary. I found that they've gotten better at vocabulary since I've started doing this. And then they're like actively engaged and it just is a really good way to do things. First and second grade then have a welcome song. And we often do solfege or rhythmic um, echoes with first and second grade and then after that we always do a movement activity for every grade so even the two things I skipped for the older kids I still do a movement activity right off the bat and then from there I can kind of choose whatever I want depending on what we are working on and what you know goes with the lesson the next one is to have a sequence I love that I'm a music teacher in particular because I have complete control over my curriculum i love that nobody is handing me a curriculum and saying like this is what you're doing i love that creativity and that's one of my favorite things but it can also be overwhelming especially my first year i was like i don't know what to teach and i don't know when to teach anything and like what is happening so what i did is i actually went on and i researched some just some different kodai sample sequences and i kind of meshed them together and cobbled them into my own thing so i will pop it up on the screen and i will also link the coordinating blog post in the description if you watch it this video the day it comes out it might not be out yet so just a heads up on that but that will be out and then you can see kind of what i do each year now of course this is a fluid thing and so like this year honestly we're not getting to everything because i'm filming this in the 2020 2021 school year and my kids have been virtual for almost a full year now so frankly, we are very far behind. We have shorter class periods, less days of the week. I um, haven't seen a lot of my kids all year long. So we might not be, you know, like on target, especially with the older kids. I really focus on like playing instruments and stuff like that rather than like lots of specific concepts. But you can go check that out. And also I linked some of the Kodai sequences in that blog post as well. So you can check out both those things. So you can look at theirs and look at mine. Um, the one I have linked in there that is a Kodai sequence is way more than most elementary music teachers are gonna get to just because of time. So do, uh, you know, take that with a grain of salt. With that, so that's kind of having like your whole, we're gonna, you know, these are the concepts we wanna do. Then do some monthly planning. So I, again, have the advantage of I plan for a month at a time because I have to, but what I did at the beginning of the year is I just sat down and I said, okay, I'm gonna see, you know, run rotation. This year it actually is four weeks, so it works out really well. In the past it usually was five weeks, so it was like a little bit off, but I just kind of outlined all of the different months that I'll have them, and then I just kind of put down what I would like to be working on at those different times. It has changed a little bit because again, things are different this year, but just having those things written down has made a huge difference because then I at least kind of know what I'm aiming at. And if I say like, oh, okay, my kids aren't quite ready for law, then I can push it back a month, but I still know it's coming. And so I can kind of keep on top of that. As opposed to my first year when I didn't do that and I got to the end of the year and I was like, I completely forgot to teach that concept that I was supposed to teach. So this just kind of helps you stay on track. It also means that if you hear on a podcast or in a video or on a blog post of like a really fun lesson, but you're not to that part yet, you can kind of write it under there. So I've been doing that. For example, um, my kids are going to work, my second graders are going to work on dough next time I see them. So like in two months, I think. And so I came across a really fun activity for dough. And so I went ahead and wrote it under that month so that when I come to that month, I'm like, oh, hey, I wanted to do this activity because it's fun. And then there was a book that went along with it. So I was like, I can do that too. And so those are just little ways that you can kind of keep on top and it makes it a lot easier. The next one is having a unit or a theme. Now, because I have my kids for a week at a time, I have really, really, embrace this. I love to have some kind of coordinating theme throughout the entire week. So sometimes that's like when I teach forte and piano and I do all bear songs and mouse songs so that we can compare them. This week we're working on Swan Lake with my third graders and we did Nutcracker the time before so we did ballet and or um, next month my fourth and fifth graders are actually learning two different rhythmic concepts but they're using the same songs. I'm just gonna like pull out different pieces of the songs 
and we're doing all spirituals so we're doing like tons of different spirituals with all these different things and it just really makes it more cohesive and just kind of a lot more fun so i really 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 encourage you to think about some units or themes that could be similar animals that could be holiday theme lesson you could do like valentine's day or black history month or hispanic heritage month we do all hispanic songs in the month of like in that like september to october time the entire time it's great i love it um usually at the end of the year i like to do um like tropical themes so we might do like hawaiian songs or just different things like that to make it a lot more fun and it just kind of makes it more exciting and then it makes it easier for you because then you're like oh we're doing you know fortane piano with bears and mice so oh i can pull in this and i can pull in that and it just makes it easier to figure out what you're going to do and it also makes it all more cohesive so your transitions are better the next one is really simple and that is having an ideas list so i just have in my google doc i just have a google doc where i have each of the concepts lined out so it says like quarter note and eighth notes rest half note <laughs> and then like 16th notes and underneath them i just write any ideas that i come across any songs i come across any books that go along with those and just all those different things because otherwise i'm gonna forget and i'm never gonna use them so when you come across something fun it just stick it in a google doc and then it come back to it later when you're lesson planning and you'll have all these great ideas and you're not starting from scratch trying to remember where you found things Pinterest is also a great place to go for ideas because you can pin things to different boards. You could have like a board for rhythm and a board for, you know, like, I don't know, Valentine's Day activities, whatever, whatever. But you get the gist. But you get the idea. Just keep all your ideas together. That's always the biggest thing is just keep your ideas together. Don't keep them in your head because you're never going to remember them. Now, the next one, it doesn't necessarily make it easier, but it makes it a lot more fun, and that is try something new. When I am at the point in the school year where I'm like, I would really like it to be summer now, I always try something new. So especially at like for right now, my kids were supposed to come back in person in January and then that didn't happen because COVID and numbers and all the different stuff, we gotta be safe. But I was like, okay, we need something fun and we need something new. So I ended up doing my first ever virtual field trips. Like I just mentioned, we are doing one for Swan Lake for third grade and fourth and fifth grade is doing a virtual field trip to the opera to see Carmen and having something new and different has made me more excited and the kids more excited and it's just a little out of the ordinary so again it doesn't necessarily make it easier but it does make it a lot more fun to just add something new last year we did ukuleles for the first time and so that was fun and it just injected fun in you know I had to grow and I had to think about how I was going to do those things and it was a mess but it was great and they loved it and I loved it so Think about things that you could do that maybe you haven't ever done before and just try something new. I will link the Swan Lake and the Carmen virtual field trips down below in case you are interested in those as well. And my last tip is probably the most important and that is review and adjust. After you teach your lesson, take a minute, sit down and think, okay, what went well and what didn't go well? I always think of what do I want to keep? What do I want to change? What do I want to adjust? And what do I want to just completely stop? So sometimes you'll do a lesson and one activity is just not fun. You can change that. Or maybe you do a lesson and you have a really hard time transitioning from one activity to the other. You can change that. After you do your lessons, maybe like on Monday afternoon, just sit down and kind of look at them and think like, okay, what could have been better? How could I change that? This isn't gonna make things easier like in the moment, but it will make things better long-term because now, next time you already know, oh, that activity didn't work, I'm gonna try something different. Or, oh, I didn't like that very much, or oh, it would have been better if I'd had this, or oh, it wasn't long enough, or oh, it was too short, or oh, it wasn't long enough, or oh, it was too long. And so you can adjust from there. So over time, lesson planning will get incrementally easier because you're thinking through and adjusting your lesson plans. It'll also make your lessons better because you will be continually improving them and making them better anyway. All right, friends, that went by actually a lot faster than I thought it was going to. So thank you guys so much for watching. Those are all my tips for making lesson planning easier. I would love to know your favorite tips. So let me know down below what you do to make lesson planning easier. I will link everything that I talked about in the description. If you haven't subscribed and you are a music teacher, definitely hit the subscribe button down below. That helps make sure that you see the next videos, especially if you hit that notification bell. And if you liked this video and got value then hit the like button too because that helps other people see it as well thanks so much for watching and i will see you next time bye
this month and then this month and I just sometimes this month this in fourth and fifth grade is doing a, hey stop it all right friends that went by faster than I thought it was going to so thank you